My name is Elle. And I am Bill. And, and this, this is, is the, the Witching, Witching Hour. Hour. If you're new to our podcast, here's what we're about. First, this is a pagan podcast. About all things pagan and related topics. And we are live from our own studio in the Deep South. <laughs> so you never know what's likely to come out of either of us at any given time. June's Witching Hour is going to be a short one. We are highlighting the opening of the season of Pagan Pride Days all over the world and feature ours in particular as the season closes into the actual date. And we also want to get set up for our new co-host, more on that later, and see who and what he brings to the table for our discussion. And Bill is going to share his tarot table witchery with you. He's trying out a new approach to sharing his craft, so stay tuned. For those of you who have been following us in past episodes, you will notice some changes. First, we decided you might get a kick out of a spontaneous approach to whatever topics we bring you. This means we hope to introduce you to our new co-host in July. His name is Ro, and about as cool a pagan fellow as you ever want to meet. For instance, Ro is in the process of publishing a newsletter for Ancient Path Covenstead which is the parent group for this area. Hopefully, he will be sharing the contents of that newsletter when it concerns pagan issues in general. Ro has been very successful with this in the past, so we feel very lucky to have him. One of the items on the docket this evening is Pagan Pride Day. All pagans should be pretty familiar with this event by now. Pagan Pride Day is an annual event held in a variety of locations across the world. And you know, it's actually been going on since 1992. A lot of people don't know that. The festivities are as varied as the communities who organize them. Some events are as simple as an open picnic or cookout held at a local park. Some events are full-fledged festivals, which rent venues uh, with performance stages and food facilities. That's how we organize ours, not on such a huge scale but as described with all the trimmings. There are, however, several common elements. First and foremost is the goal of educating the public about the beliefs and practices of various pagan traditions. The general public is invited, and there are usually tables of reading materials, staffed by members of a range of pagan denominations. Speakers may focus on dispelling common misconceptions about paganisms, or others may seek to educate outsiders about the details of their particular beliefs and practices. However, there is no pressure for anyone to join this religion and no proselytizing from our own folks. If you are curious, we will chat with you. If you are not, just enjoy the day with the rest of us. Pagan Pride Day events are almost always open to families and children. After all, pagans have families and children. There are rules regarding what can and cannot occur at such events that ensure that the event is family-friendly and open to all. Many pagan pride festivals showcase local pagan and non-pagan performers, and artisans and merchants. This is always the best place during the pagan year to get items at better than commercial prices and a variety that are often hard to find in local areas. And some events offer sessions where attendees can take a turn chanting, telling jokes, spinning tales, drumming, or reading poetry. And speaking of poetry... Our Pagan Pride Day has been adopted by our own poet laureate of the area, author Patricia Della Piana. Pat has been bringing the art of poetry to pagans in the form of her annual Pagan Pride Poetry Rite for several years now. There is a contest in many categories along with awards and prizes. If you live in the local area and plan on attending the Augusta Pagan Pride Day, Look up her link on Facebook listed as Augusta Pagan Pride 2018 Poetry Right. All the information is listed there, and I mean all of it. We will keep you up to date with each new podcast until our Pagan Pride Day, September 22nd, 2018, is up and ready to rock and roll. All the present details can be found on Facebook under the same name, Augusta Pagan Pride Day 2018. And now, pull up a chair and spend a few moments with our own mage of the tarot table. Do your tarot bit. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Geez. I'm not supposed to read that. Okay. okay, guys. For the last few pagan podcasts that we've had, I've been doing 
a card. I pick out the major arcana card that happens to be randomly in my deck, and I've been describing that card, and pretty much definition, here you go. However, this time, I shuffled the deck. I pull out three cards. I'm going to do a small, very abbreviated reading of what those three cards will do. Oh, be still, my heart. The first core card that I picked, and these are left to right. Usually I have the person that I'm reading shuffle the cards and deal out three cards. But since I'm the only one here, except for my lovely L, I picked out the three cards. Excuse me. You're the only one here? I'm sitting right across from you. I'm watching you do this. Okay. I'm supposed to be your surrogate here. Okay. I'm doing your reading. How's that? That's great. The first card placed on the left is Signification of the Past. And that first card is the Knight of Cups. Mm. The second card is signifying the present. Okay. That's the page of coins or pentacles. <gasps> and the third, the future, is a major arcana card, temperance, number 14 in the deck. Temperance, huh? Okay. Temperance. Your past. My past. First of all, cups signify spiritual authority, your inner feelings. The meaning of this particular card, as it signifies today, is in your past, you abandoned materialism and putting your spiritual fulfillment in the forefront, your self-actualization, as it would be. I cannot imagine a single time in my life that I have abandoned materialism, but play on. You're seeking and you seek a new life with an order of simplicity. You traveled a lot. You explored the world. I did and do that. Discovered who you were, who you are, and who you wanted to be. Okay, now let me let me tell you something. That is actually very, very accurate. And I know I'm I'm playing around and teasing you and everything, but actually you've been pretty much dead on. Keep going. The past is what brings you to today at this point in your life. The second card, which represents the present, is the page of coins or pentacles. Now the suit itself indicates money, business, and material possessions. Yummy. They are cards of skill and tangible accomplishment. This one in particular, drawn here, shows that one is studious and works hard to achieve that which you have. That's me. That is absolutely me. The page is holding a message, which signifies that a messenger is expected, or good news, is about to be received. I always like that. And it may be of a financial nature, or it may not. I really like that, at least the first part. Which brings us to the future, temperance, which is card number 14 in the major, which says... In its meaning today, although you are receiving the good news of the last card, you will deal with it in moderation. You're not one to go off half-cocked and go crazy with whatever good news you have. Many of the spiritual and material goals you had in your past have entrenched themselves in your life so that you have been met and you are in a sense of balance in your life. Okay, I, I kind of like that, and I think it's kind of interesting. I'm trying to remember when I didn't get overexcited about any kind of good news, any kind of good news. But, you know, I kind of see exactly what you're talking about, and I can see how somebody that you were reading, if they understand what you're saying, um, could really get something from this. Play on. So, continuing, it also signifies that some kind of a compromise, either with yourself or with someone close to you, that is mutually acceptable will be negotiated, and you will reap the rewards by appreciating the simple pleasures in life, which basically, under all of this, signifies that you like that down-home type spirit and don't like to go off showing airs of you're more important than you actually are. Thank you. I hope you're right. (laughs) No, I know you're right. Yeah, I like that. That's very nice. And I am, I don't know if I'm simple in my lifestyle, but I'm simple in my wants and needs, and I'm just really happy that a lot of people give me a lot of really cool stuff. You know what I mean? (laughs) That's correct. Well, you have to remember that in a short reading like this or in a longer reading, uh, usually I take, even for this style reading, up towards to half an hour. And you have to remember that it's, it's not setting forth your life in stone. This is the way it was. This is the way it is. This is the way it will always be. It's not true. I'm giving you a roadmap. You can look at which direction you might want to go and choose to go this road or another road or none of them at all. You may look at it and say, this is total bunk. I'm not going to, you know, listen to you. I don't think I'd ever do that. I always listen to you. I love you. (laughs) (laughs) Not everyone I read does. (laughs) 
I hope not. <laughs> so where we're going with this is that what you choose to do with someone's reading, be it mine or someone else's, mm-hmm. is totally up to you. You can go whatever direction you want to and make of it what you will. You know, I will tell you that the few people, you know, the few people that I have um, spoken to after you've done their readings over the years, um, mostly have either been totally freaking amazed, or certainly said, "Yes, yes, this was uh, this was very relevant to me, and it really meant a lot to me." I've even uh, seen people cry and didn't know exactly why and didn't ask any more questions than they wanted to, um, you know, tell me about. So. You must do a pretty good job, which brings me to this. Are you going to be reading tarot at uh, Pagan Pride Day for us in September? I'm going to be reading tarot in uh, two different 45-minute to an hour sessions. Okay. Uh, split apart by um, a break in between. Um, I don't usually read a lot in a row because it takes a lot out of my mental and physical faculties. Yeah, it's tiring. It is. I know. I've seen you after the readings. And uh, usually I use the cards as the guide for what I'm telling someone. The cards give me the basic tools. After I read what the suit is all about and what the card actually means, my I kind of go off the cards, uh-huh. so to speak, mm-hmm. and uh, use my feelings about what that person is doing, what they're up to. And my best readings are those that I really don't dwell too much on the actual card, but more on what I'm getting from the individual that I'm talking to. Your spidery senses. Yes. Your witchery, majory senses. With with great powers come great responsibility. (laughs) Yes, they do. (laughs) And uh, I'll recommend that if you're uh, interested in tarot at all, that you take out a deck that's your favorite. Um, I don't necessarily do my own readings, but I love to do readings for other people. The particular deck that I'm using today is called Golden Taro by Cat Black. It's a very beautiful deck of tarot cards. and uh, Yeah, it is. It's gorgeous. Like I said, everybody has their favorites. I have 10 or 12 decks myself and um, only use one at a time, of course. But uh, Well, just let me ask you a question. Sure. If you sell all the tarot decks, can you take me to the Bahamas? Uh, if we rent a rowboat in Florida and row across... <laughs> Oh, that sounds like fun. If we were younger, I swear I'd do it. Okay, sweetie, that's a wrap. Help me close this place up. Um, So our hour is up, and it's time to go. Uh, Look for us again next month. I have no idea exactly the time or exactly the day or exactly the bat bat cave or whenever we show up. I mean, who knows? That's what makes us so exciting. And, sweetie, take us out. Before we go... We're going to turn you over for a moment to credit the real magicians who make our show possible. The tarot tells me, take it away, Rob. Thanks, Bill. And thank you for listening to The Witching Hour. If you want to know when next month's episode comes out and are not entirely sure like Ellen and Bill seem to not be, but that's okay. Go to their website, thewitchinghour.com. There's buttons for Facebook and Twitter where you'll always find the announcement for the next show. Or you, there's buttons for iTunes and YouTube and the Google Play Store where you can subscribe to the show and it will automatically come to you almost like magic. Except it's not. It's technology. But hey, I'm being picky. The Witching Hour has been brought to you by the Coil Entertainment Network. Visit our website, coil.us, C-O-Y-L dot U-S. And don't forget to leave Elle and Bill notes and questions. Contact information for Facebook and email are both on the website. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time.